I'm Will Presley. I'm the principal software engineer and uh, manager of the engineering team for uh, DNS and load balancing software at EdgeCast. Uh, quickly, EdgeCast, uh, with, on your lanyards, uh, we're kind of a big deal and all that. But uh, <laughs> we're a large CDN founded in 2006 and we account for about 4 to 7% of the internet. So my talk is about, uh, oh right, slides. Ah. <laughs> my talk's about failure. <laughs> and uh, mine, actually, and it's dedicated to all of us who failed spectacularly and lived to tell the tale, right? So uh, it was a cold, dark night uh, in lovely Santa Monica. It was storming, of course. It was 2.30 in the morning and my six-month-old child was crying loudly in the next room. That's all bullshit, by the way. But I was trying to work on this really annoying issue of a config mangling uh, problem I was having in some DNS software, and DNS authority, authoritative software. And, uh, you know, it was just uh, really annoying more than anything. But um, I decided a quick hack to fix the config change. And, uh, well, that tickled the kernel bug that, oops, uh, didn't see that one coming. And at the time, we hadn't really come to too many uh, Velocity conferences, so we didn't really have <laughs> really uh, great kind of DevOps skills at the time. We've learned since, thank you. And uh, there were some red herrings that kind of fired there with some IP tables rules that kind of config the, confused the issue long enough to the point where all of our DNS was kind of stopping. And uh, it turns out that stuff's really important. Um, <laughs> like really important. So reverting was uh, very difficult. Now, that's all I'm actually gonna say about the failure because this talk is not actually about failure as much as coming back from it, like recovering. So, um, just a uh, note here. So, you know, us as nerds, lacking social skills to build proper lives of our own often kind of tangle and graft our own kind of work lives onto our personal lives. And you know, you couple that with the drumbeat of uh, of constant release after release, and um, you know, all the pressure there just makes the stakes so huge that uh, anytime you have a failure, especially a big one, it becomes something on the magnitude of a personal apocalypse. And that's where I was at this point, in that lonely, quiet oblivion, kind of floating out into nothingness, um, and. Uh, I, uh, a few existential questions kind of occur to you at this time. Um, for instance, where will my family live, you know, after they fire me, right? This is a bridge at the I-10 and the 405. It looked really nice and warm and comfortable, and that's only $1,000 a month on the west side of Los Angeles, it's a fact. What will my family eat? You know, the stink lines really sold me on this uh, clip art here. I searched long and hard. Now, uh, where will my kids go to college? Well, <laughs> Hollywood Upstairs Medical College, of course. Um, and how will I pay my student loans? If you don't get this one, and you see someone laughing, ask them, because they might be able to explain it to you. So, uh, at this time, you know, what you have to do is just get through the moment. And, uh, you know, you need to keep perspective. You need to breathe and focus and just try to clear your mind and get through the moment. And like I said, keep perspective. This is the internet. Planes aren't falling from the sky. People just aren't getting their porn. It's cool. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> after you get through it and the network's back up, uh, people are going to start asking questions, right? Uh, especially uh, salespeople, because they hate it when you fuck with their money, right? And, uh, you know, you just have to provide all the information you can and, and kind of sit on calls with them. And it turns out management likes it even less, right? Um, so, uh, you know, for management to kind of look at an employee that's had this problem, if the engineer can articulate clearly the failure and have data to back it up and a path forward, then, um, you know, these people are incredibly well qualified and very incentivized, see the existential crisis part I mentioned earlier, to kind of move forward with a solution. You know, uh, also, those people that get through this are, are kind of battle-hardened and scarred. You know, who has 
two thumbs and is never going to shit in the internet again, right? This guy. <laughs> so the first thing you have to do, though, is, is completely own the problem. Um, and, you know, saying my bad is important. Uh, you have to show your coworkers and management that you can get beyond it. And um, you need to resist the urge, specifically, to make excuses for yourself. It's a really natural defensive reaction. And Lord knows I could imagine a bunch of them in kind of the heat of the moment. But um, it delays and it deter uh, detracts from the energy of the thing that you really need to do, which, um, as every good DevOps person knows, is uh, post-mortem, right? So the truth will set you free if you let it. And um, you need to conduct brutally honest postmortems, and you know don't spare yourself. Um, the only way uh, the situation is going to improve, and your feelings about the situation are going to improve, is if you make a better system out of it. If you end up on the other end of it with something that's stronger, more reliable, more resilient. So um, uh, the engineering takeaways from this, like I said, are pretty obvious too a room of web ops and DevOps folks. So I'm not really gonna go into those. I'll say specifically in my case, it was a combination of um, kind of some mounting technical debt with some really bad operational naivete. And um, we built a better test environment, uh, lots of good test cases. We kind of realized that comps are code themselves and you need to test them just like you would code. And uh, we had to kind of build a, a way to canary these massive kind of DNS changes in a, in a good way. And we've had perfect uptime since, and I'm proud of that. Uh, and, and, you know, you get through it eventually. So, conclusions. Uh, I remember my failure all the time. I do. But I don't dwell on it anymore so much. Uh, there are some lessons that <laughs> you only really need to learn once, uh, it turns out. And... Uh, Despite the lighthearted way that I present the failure, I'm not proud of the failure itself, but I am proud of the system that came out the other side of it. And uh, I'm really proud of the uptime and all the, uh, all the work that has, has made a stronger system since. And, uh, you know, if, if you find yourself in this scenario in the future, you know, just remember what I said, get through it, breathe, be brutally honest to yourself and your coworkers and build a better system at the end of it. Uh, that's, that's how you feel better about it. But if you still don't feel okay, you know, if you're still having trouble going forward, maybe we can make like, you know, a, a, you know, like an Alcoholics Anonymous style thing. You know, it'll be like that, just with slightly more whimsy. And, uh, and if after all of that, uh, you still are feeling kind of bad, even after Internet Failures Anonymous or whatever hasn't gotten you there, Maybe you can talk your company into flying you to some exotic locale, uh, locale and talking about it to your peers. <laughs> so, thanks.